In this lecture, you're going to learn what Flask is. The author of Flask describes it as a micro framework for Python based on Vorkzeug, Jinja2, and Good Intentions. That's a very good definition of Flask, but it's also filled with a number of terms that you might not be familiar with. Vorkzeug is a utility library for WSGI, and WSGI stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. It is a universal interface between web servers and web applications, and it's also a PEP standard. This is a really deep topic that we don't need to go into, but just understand that if we're talking about levels of abstraction, then you can think of WSGI as the lowest level, and then on top of that there is Vorkzeug, and then finally on top of that we have Flask. Next up, there's Jinja2, and this is an HTML templating language for Python. So we could say Flask is composed of a few popular libraries, and it introduces a few opinions of its own to provide a pleasant web application developing experience. That's pretty much the definition of what a web framework is. In the case of Flask, it's quite small, but it also has a rich extension system that allows you to integrate your own functionality into it. There's hundreds of awesome community-driven extensions that are well-maintained and rock-solid. We'll be using quite a number of them in this course. Oftentimes, people get concerned because Flask isn't releasing new versions all the time, but it was designed to be minimal and extended. The Flask ecosystem is strong and active. So now that you know what Flask is, let's go over what type of web applications you can build with it. I'll see you in the next lecture where we do just that.